Have you ever dreamed of visiting the Galapagos? We spent the last 10 days exploring these incredible islands, both on land and under the sea. In this video, we'll show you the best experiences, the most insane dive sites, and our top tips on how to make the most of your trip to the birthplace of evolution. Welcome to the amazing Galapagos Islands. It's our last day on San Cristobal and on the Galapagos Islands. So sad. No, I think it was a really good trip. We spent 10 days on the Galapagos Islands and we covered three islands, Santa Cruz, Isabella and San Cristobal. Just gracias. gracias. And our breakfast is here, which is a very unique dish. It's yuca bread and yuca is cassava. Mm. So it's bread made of cassava flour and I think there's cheese. There's cheese inside. Yeah. Well, these are freshly made. Oh, and the cheese smells so good. Oh, it's warm. Delicious. Oh, amazing breakfast food, lunch food, snack food, Snake. dinner. It's almost like a mochi texture. Chewy on the inside, crunchy on the outside. Oh, it's so good. And the set comes with some yogurt. We got Mora yogurt, which is blackberry, blackberry yogurt, and look, sustainable straws. Mm. Anyways, we spent 10 days on the Galapagos over which islands? Over Santa Cruz, Isabella and San Cristobal Islands. Which are the three main islands mm. of uh, the Galapagos. But during our time here, we also did some tours to other islands. Like for example, well, Baltra is cheating because that's where the that's airport the is. Airport island. Next to Baltra is North Seymour and Mosquera, which is to the east. Uh -huh. I don't know, we should just put a map here. Isabella, well, that's a giant island, so we didn't visit. Yeah, we didn't go to any offshore islands. Yeah. For San Cristobal, we took a trip to Kiko Rock, which is not technically an island, but it's a giant rock in the middle of the ocean that looks like a boot. It's called Leon Do... what? Leon Dormines? I think it means Sleeping no, Lion. Sleeping Lion, because well, the edge of the cliff looks kind of like Mufasa. No. And yesterday we also visited Española Island, which is the only place in the Galapagos where the albatross birds nest. 10 days is a good amount of time to spend on the Galapagos. I think minimum 7 days yeah. or 8 days if you want to cover the three islands. Mm -hmm. We booked all our tours with one provider who helped to coordinate with the different tour agencies so that we didn't have to search for tours at each island. I think that it's more expensive, but at least we save some time, like search time. Even though although when we arrived on the islands, we realized that it's very easy to find tours because there's so many tour shops everywhere um, and you probably can get it at a much cheaper price. So we're here in uh, late August, early September. I'm not sure what, whether it's the time that we're here or because this is what it looks like in general, but there are very few tourists. Mm around and we keep bumping into the same people <laughs> over and over again even on different islands it's the same people so because of the few tourists it looks like it's easy for for you to just come here and uh, book a last minute cruise but uh if it's peak season i'm not too sure what is it your results may differ from us <laughs> yeah we're here during the cold season cold and dry season um, which is good for land activities, I guess because it's dry. There are also a lot of cool currents which bring the plankton, so it's good for whale shark and mola mola. But we didn't see any of those. But regardless, I think yeah. all the dives that we did were phenomenal, except for day one, but we'll just cancel that out. What did we see while we were diving? We did seven dives in total, North Seymour, Mosquera. Those two dives uh, were combined into one day. The visibility for us was really bad. I and think it, was it, was, freezing yeah, cold, it was freezing cold. Below 19 degrees. In wetsuits, the dive instructors were all in dry suits, shivering the whole time. Wasn't pleasant, didn't see anything. Saw shadows of something. Um, dive instructor said it was a tiger shark, which is, I don't know how we can tell from the shadow, but yeah. 
I didn't see anything. I was just so cold. A2 was much better. We went to the famous Gordon's Rock, which is a rock that sticks out in the middle of the ocean and usually that means that there's a lot of marine life. Actually, it's a few rocks. Oh, a few rocks, yeah, yeah. Right, stick up. Naming yeah. conventions in the Galapagos is really unique, right? So there are three rocks and the, the three rocks are called the big rock, the medium rock, and the small rock. Fascinating naming conventions they have here. <laughs> we did two dives. I think we both we did both dives at the big rock because that's where the visibility was the best and the currents on that day were pretty good, not too strong. So we managed to do two dives there. And then what did we see? We saw so many hammerhead sharks and they came so close. The visibility was much better, but not still amazing. not amazing. I think it was maybe 15 meters. But they came so close yeah. that we could see the hammerheads and we saw their eyes. They looked at us. From the side. They're giving you the side eye all the time. <laughs> Very shifty characters. <laughs> yeah, and then we saw like four eagle rays. Yeah, it's the first time yeah, we've seen hammerheads <laughs> and eagle rays. So, yeah. checked two of the list <laughs> yeah. in the same dive. We're not even in the hammerhead season, but we saw at least at least 30. Yeah. At least 30 swimming around. Crazy. Next dives that we did... Uh, uh, Kicker Rock. Kicker Rock. Yeah. So that's here in San Cristobal. It's also famous for hammerhead sharks. And we saw hammerhead sharks, but they didn't come so close. Yeah, it's, a, were, it's a cleaning yeah. station where the sharks circle around and they get cleaned by little reef fish, yeah. which seems terrifying if you were a reef fish. <laughs> But apparently they don't get eaten because it's like a mutual benefit thing. Is it symbiotic? Yes, yes. It's a symbiotic. symbiotic relationship. Wow. The scientist over here. <laughs> the second dive was through a channel. We went through like very nice coral area. Blue, purple reef with a lot of um, sea urchins that look like sea mine. And there were some nice blue starfish. Blue nudie branch. Blue nudie which are branch. endemic only to the Galapagos actually. And we saw sea turtles, we saw sea lions. And uh, big schools of uh, yellow surgeon mm. fish. Yeah. And really the nice. other fish, the, the one that looks like a parrot fish. Mexican hawkfish. Ah, Mexican hawkfish. Yeah, I think that was a good dive. We saw a lot of small fishes. Not really for the big stuff, but we saw small stuff. Final dive at Gretna Islet. Mm, Island which is close to Espanola. The key highlight of the dive is that you are able to enter a cave yeah, without cave diving certification because it's like, it's an easy cave, no currents, nothing. But the best thing that happened was that three or four or five sea lions yeah. just came by, followed us for the whole dive and were playing around yeah. everywhere. I said hi to one. He said hi back, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, they, they followed us into the cave. Uh, it's kind of scary sometimes when you're in the darkness and this like big animal comes towards you with his big pupil eyes. They're so cute. They're really cute. They're like little dogs underwater. Yeah, I think they were so friendly. No accidents. I was thinking that maybe some of them would try to bite, but they didn't. They are totally different from when they are on land. <laughs> Agile, speedy, yeah. they can maneuver around the corals and you like effortlessly. We're like a seal on land, underwater. A sea lion <laughs> on land, underwater. Yeah, we're like swimming super slowly. Yeah. But yeah, if not for the sea lions, the dive would be yeah, pretty, pretty average, but yeah. yeah, we were lucky. So out of all your all the dives, which is your favorite dive? Gordon's Rock. Mine too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You gotta do Gordon's Rock. That's, yeah. yeah, it's it's a no-brainer. If you're a diver, you just gotta do it. Yeah, but we were lucky. Mm. We were very lucky because yeah. the instructors said that um, usually the hammerhead sharks don't come so close. But then there was one guy that like yeah, just diverted came. from his group and came so close to us. Yeah, and a great shot with uh, the eagle race and the hammerhead in the same video. Amazing, really amazing. Besides diving, we also had day tours. Yeah, we did um, all land-based tours versus uh, going on a cruise or going on a liverboard. I think mainly because we wanted a mix of land tours and diving and snorkeling. But the cruisers usually provide like only snorkeling tours or only diving tours. On our first day that we arrived, we went to El Chateau Ranch, which is a reserve for the Galapagos tortoises. We saw so many big tortoises. 
it's your dream come true. Before coming to the Galapagos, yeah. in my mind, I was thinking, oh, I really hope I get to see just one Galapagos tortoise. Even just driving into the ranch, yeah, it's so there are like at least 20 or 30 just all along the road. <laughs> my dream! They're so cute. My dream to see yeah. a Galapagos tortoise. And, we... and, and, and you realize that there's not just one Galapagos tortoise. There's like multiple species. Um, there's like a saddleback one and a flat shell one. Yeah. <laughs> cool ones. They also yeah. have a Galapagos tortoise breeding program. Yeah at uh, the Charles Darwin Research Center, which is also on uh, Santa Cruz Island. Yeah. We went to see Los Hemelos, Hemelos which is a collapsed crater. A mm. collapsed crater, but we didn't see much because it was so misty. The weather here changes very drastically. It can be sunny and dry on one side, and then misty and rainy and cold on the other side. Uh, but generally, the rain was very misty. It didn't get too heavy, so it was fine. Yeah. We went to Charles Darwin Research Centre on the first day as well. It's free unless you want to do the tour of the oh, uh, tortoises. But you have to do the tour. Yeah, I think you have to do you the tour. You have to do the tour. Yeah. The guys are so knowledgeable. They tell you all about the ecosystem, how all the animals you know, evolved, evolved together with the environment, whether it's the finches or the tortoises and iguanas. Yeah, mm. definitely do the tour. It's only $10. So you can take ferries to each of the islands between Santa Cruz and Isabella and Santa Cruz and San Cristobal. The ferries are not ferries. The ferries are basically modified speedboats <laughs> that take like two and a half hours over open ocean, super choppy waters. They were handing out barf bags like before the boat left. Yeah, it was very, <laughs> so very choppy. Yeah, when you're on the boat, you have two choices. Choice number one, you sit in the back of the boat. Not so bumpy because that's where the motor is, but you get splashed non-stop. They hand out raincoats for you, but it's cold, it's windy, it's wet. Yeah. Choice number two, you sit in the front of the boat. Stay dry, less wind, but you're at the mercy of the ocean. The best choice is sit in the middle. Oh well, yeah, the middle, but the middle seats up get immediately. taken immediately. So if you sit at the front, every single wave, you're gonna feel like a falling roller coaster <laughs> feeling down. Be prepared to not sleep for two and a half hours. Unless I, you take some sleeping pills. Yeah, those, not sleeping pills. Motion sickness pills. Oh, drowsy motion sickness yeah, pills. Yeah, those are really good. We took that for the ferry from Santa Cruz to San Cristobal and it just knocked out. Yeah, all the way. Yeah, all the way. Pretty good. Yeah. So, or yeah. you can take a flight between the islands, but I don't know, what's, we don't have budget for that. <laughs> some people that we met took a flight yeah. and they said it was amazing. 30 minutes versus two and a half hours. On Isabella, we did the Lost Tunnelers tour, uh, which is super, super recommended. Yeah. It was quite far. I think it was like... Yeah, but an hour and a half, Yeah, maybe, hour and by, a half by, by speedboat. By speedboat. And then uh, you get to this area where there's a lot of lava rocks. Lost Tunnelers actually means the tunnels. So the lava rocks are formed in the shape of tunnels in the water. But when we were there, it was high tide, so we couldn't see like maybe the arch. And at Lost Tunnelers, you can see blue-footed boobies. Blue-footed boobies. Yeah. The famous birds in Galapagos. Because, you know, everybody loves boobies. Yeah. We could see the blue-footed boobies nesting. And you could see their cheek, like the white color, like puff. Okay, so cheek. nesting is a huge overstatement of what the blue-footed boobies actually do. Their nest is just the floor. The floor. The lava right? rock. It's just the floor. There's no nest. They don't. They don't get twigs. They don't get rocks. They don't get feathers. They don't get nothing. It's just. It's just the ground. Yeah. And they evolved here without any natural predators, so they never needed to build a nest up high. So literally, you see the baby just lying on the ground. Lying on the ground. Helpless, and, and yeah. they don't even. The parents don't even move when the humans come close yeah. to them. Yeah, Which just, is the amazing thing about the Galapagos. Yeah, so you can get quite close, but not too close, and you can get really great pictures of yeah. the blue-footed boobies. And, and their feet are really blue! Their feet are really blue. It's not edited. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. The okay. blue pigments actually come from the fish. Oh no, no, it's a uh, genetic. But the colour, the blueness of it changes based on the fish that they eat. We also did snorkeling at Lost Tunnelers. 
And normally we have very low expectations for snorkeling because we dive and I don't know, on the Galapagos you don't even need to dive. Yeah, There's no, no need to the, dive, just go snorkeling. The snorkeling is the <laughs> best snorkeling that we've ever done. You get in the water, right? A minute later, a black tip shark is like swimming next to you. Hundreds of sea turtles everywhere. You see white tip uh, sharks resting in the rocks. And the best part is that we saw baby yeah, black tip so, sharks. I've never seen so many baby sharks up close. I they got to swim with them. Yeah, they were so cute. Yeah, amazing. So definitely, highly, 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 highly recommend Lost Tunnelers when you're here. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, even if the water is cold, you should just get in. Yeah, just get in because she hates cold water. One, two, three. You have no choice. You got to go and yeah, see and, the animals. And the snorkeling is not like the snorkeling that we've done in other countries where the boat just parks in the middle of the ocean and then you just snorkel around the boat. It was like an actual tour. You follow the guide to like different areas. Yeah. Yeah. It That's was, crazy. Yeah. The next day tour that we did was uh, Sierra Negra, which is a active volcano of like 45 minutes outside of the main city in Isabella. Supposedly, it is the volcano with the biggest crater and it was pretty big. The guide said that the crater was at least 10 kilometers across, which was huge. After you pass the crater, you also go to uh, El Chico, Chico El volcano. volcano Chico, yeah. which is the same volcano, just a different landscape. You walk, like, you, you walk to a place that looks like you're walking on the moon or walking mm. on Mars. It's totally desolate. Almost no animals, no trees, only very few cacti that can actually grip onto the volcanic rocks. The landscape is pretty much out of this world. The end point is a peak where you can get like a very nice view of the landscape and, and the mountain. If it's clear, you can see across Isabella Island as well. Yeah. Um, but be prepared, it's a very long walk. So they don't tell you, but it's eight kilometers one way and then you walk eight kilometers <laughs> all the way back. Bring your walking shoes or walking boots. Right, day trip number three? Three. Yeah, we was... went to North Seymour Island. This was a land, land and snorkeling tour. I don't know which tour agency we got, but we had the best guide, Mr. Robert. And uh, the best boat. And the best boat that we've ever sat on. Well, not ever sat on, but that we sat on this trip. Yeah. Free coffee, free tea. Free uh, cookies. As you can see, our expectations are quite low recently. <laughs> um, and they had a salon which was dry and enclosed. And, and, a, and a shower when you get up from your snorkeling. The guide was amazing. Yeah. He was very knowledgeable and very well spoken and he has like ultimate thoughtfulness and consideration for his guests. So look for Mr. Robert when you're on Santa Cruz Island. On the island, we saw blue footed boobies as well. I think they're just like everywhere. They <laughs> are everywhere. Even at Tortuga Bay, which you can walk to yourself. Yeah. They're just, just there. And we saw the courtship display of the frigate birds where they blow up the red chest and they do like some drumming sounds to attract the female frigates. An yeah. interesting fact about the frigate birds, they are purely seabirds, means they get their food from the ocean, but they cannot get wet. So if a frigate bird ever touches the water, they just die. Because they can't swim, and then they can't fly again. So crazy for them to evolve like that. But yep. they're also known as the pirates of the sea. Yeah. La pirata. They mainly steal food from other birds. I think that was mostly it on North Seymour. The snorkeling was in the ocean. Mm. It was just mainly like reef fish. Reef fish. A couple of sharks dove down oh, the sea. Yeah, yeah, we saw, we saw some sharks. I think North Seymour... It's probably the, the most average tour, but it's still it's still amazing. Yeah, okay, it's don't, still don't, amazing. don't get us wrong. It's still amazing. Anything you do here is, is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Then we moved over here to San Cristobal. What tours did we do? We did the Española tour. Española Island is very far away from San Cristobal and the seas are so choppy. It's probably the most choppy trip that we took yeah. and it's two hours plus, two and a half hours. Yeah, two and a half hours away from San Cristobal Island. Both ways. <laughs> but I think it was worth it. Uh, Española is really nice. It's known for the uh, albatross. It's the only place in the Galapagos that the albatross nests on. 
uh, because the albatross needs a very flat land and vertical walls because they're so big that they can't fly by themselves. <laughs> they need the updraft of the wind hitting the, the cliffs to help them, to propel them upwards. Espanola has a lot of wildlife. Uh, when we were there, crazy amount of wildlife. Yeah, we were the only group there, and we, we we immediately saw like baby sea lions. They're so cute. They were so cute. We've not seen baby sea lions that young. Yeah. On they the were, normal island, they were like one or two weeks yeah. old. Yeah, and they just left alone for some reason. I just gotta be careful when there's any mothers nursing their young babies. They will bite you. Yeah, they're they're very protective. Yeah. Oh, and the whole island is protected by this like. Alpha sea lion, this very fat sea lion that is in the water. <laughs> yeah, and he barks at you yeah. if you get too close. Yeah. Um, they also have a huge amount of marine iguanas, like yeah. insane amount, just covering the path. Okay? You have to watch where you step because their tails are everywhere. The marine iguanas in Espanola Island have a special red pigment from the amount of algae that they get to eat. So, same species as the marine iguanas that you see in other islands, but Different colors, yeah, and, and they, if they eat enough, okay. they become Christmas yeah, iguanas because they get green and red pigmentation. There were also blue fluted boobies, Nazca boobies, and we saw the Galapagos hawk. Oh, so yeah. rare! Just sitting like on the tree. I gotta get my facts out. At one point of time, there were only 20 Galapagos hawks left in existence, and they had to be brought back to Santa Cruz Island for. Um, a breeding program and the breeding program managed to revitalize the population and they got brought back to the island but as of today the guide told us that there are only about 50 individuals in the whole world so seeing one and its baby and we yeah, saw, we saw two, a baby too is is amazing the guy was as shocked as we were they just <laughs> sat on the branch as we walked right next to yeah, it he didn't even fly away <laughs> one of the best parts about the tour on espanola is the blowhole which is an amazing view where, where the ocean crashes into the rocks yeah. it shoots up water and you see flying frigate birds and flying albatross yeah amazing view i think worth the long boat right there but Maybe have a bath bag in case. <laughs> okay, so which is your favorite day trip? Uh, Espanola, I think. Okay, my favorite day trip was Lost Tunnels. Every day trip here is is fantastic. Yeah, there's so much wildlife. Yeah. It's like guaranteed yeah. wildlife. Yeah. In you know, every trip. Other places they tell you, you know, no guarantees. Not in the Galapagos. <laughs> sea lions, 120%. Okay? There are so many sea lions that I have too much video of them. There's, there's too much footage. I can't... I'm just talking now to put in more and more footage because there's just... There are just sea lions all over the place. On the road, on the bench, on the boats. They topple over someone's kayak when sleeping in the middle of the night. It's crazy. Okay, so... Now, out of the three islands that we visited, which is your favorite island? Favorite island in terms of like, uh, just, just uh, on the island, I think Santa Cruz. Why? Because it has the most number of uh, <laughs> tourist shops. It has a lot of cafes. It has a lot of uh, local eats with like cheap $5 menus. Yeah, so that's my favorite. I really liked Isabella. This is the smallest town. It's literally less than like five blocks across. But the beach, oh, the beach in Isabella is is crazy. It's like from the hotel that we stayed at. It's like a two minute walk. To the beach. Oh, and you can walk to the lagoon where the flamingos are. Oh yeah. But we only saw one. Flamingos are the biggest bird in the Galapagos by size. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the most important question, which is your favorite animal in the Galapagos? The hammerhead shark. Well, maybe it will be the whale shark that we saw it. I yeah. Didn't see it. No, my favorite animal is obviously the blue-footed booby. <laughs> because how can you not love boobies? Yeah, so that's a recap of our itinerary in Galapagos. And if you liked our videos and want to follow our journey across South America, make sure to give this one a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel. <laughs> That's the first time I'm doing the outro. <laughs> See you next video! That was too long. Many motorbikes here. Okay.
This is a small road. Why there's so many cars?